Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Recently, America and the world of entertainment lost one of its great songwriters, Long Islander Irving Drake. Fortunately, My Long Island TV was present when he was honored for his 95th birthday in his hometown. Here's a look back. When will you say yes to me? Tell me quando, quando, quando. The Gold Coast Art Center and the landmark on Main Street join forces to honor great American songwriter Irving Drake. Irving Drake, who is a songwriting legend who's, living, who's lived in the town of North Hempstead for almost all of his life, um, it was time to honor him um, in his hometown. You're breaking in a new heart while you're breaking mine. Who couldn't not love? It was a very good year, which was made famous by Frank Sinatra. Um, good Morning Heartache, uh, I Believe, Tico Tico, Quando Quando. I mean, there's just, uh, those are some of more, his more well-known songs, but he really has an extensive catalog of just really fabulous music. This is the uh, celebration of uh, Irvin Drake, who, uh, it says here, I don't, I don't know who he is, but it says he's one of <laughs> America's finest 20th century songwriters. The MC for the night is actor Charles Grodin, who says that he only does these events for special people. But I'm here tonight because anybody who's older than me, and there are like two or three people, I will show up for them. And what does he think of Drake's songs? First of all, I wrote most of his stuff, and he has taken credit for it, which I feel is inappropriate, but I don't want to say that publicly. This is publicly. Uh, let me just tell you the background of his biggest hit. It was like 20, oh God, maybe three, 40 years ago, we were at the old automat on 57th Street, and I, and I was having a cup of coffee with Irvin Drake, and I said, you know, Irvin, when I was 17, <laughs> it was a very good year. A very good year for small town girls, the soft summer nights. We hide from the lights on the village green when I was 17. Irvin looked at me and said, what did you just say? Backstage, Irving Drake reveals what got him into songwriting. I had an older brother who was doing it, and I had to do everything he did. At 95, he still remembers the first song he ever wrote when he was 12 years old. It was called Now, Honey, Won't You Listen, Honey, Won't You Listen to My Song of Love. Now, Honey, Won't You Listen, Honey, Won't You Be My Little Turtle Dove. At the time, I thought a turtle dove was a, um, a turtle with wings. I really thought that, a turtle dove, you know? When I was 17, it was a very good year. What inspired him to write, it was a very good year? Who remembers? <laughs> when I was 17, it was a very good year. When I was 21, it was a very good year. When I was 35, it was a very good year, you know? And then they buried me, and it's not a very good year. Performing tonight is folk singer Christine Lavin. Believe it or not, she's a little nervous. I'm singing I'm a card-carrying, bleeding-heart liberal. And I've never played it before with guitar. This is the first time I'll be doing it in public. We thought it would help take the edge off if she could sing a few lines to Irving Drake. Card-carrying, bleeding-heart liberal, because we real American card-carrying, bleeding-heart liberals in every state made this country great. Yeah. When I was 21. Urban asked me to record some of his songs from What Makes Sammy Run. Very happy to be a part of this 95th birthday celebration. He's such a, such a prolific uh, part of American music and popular standards. And uh, I've had the pleasure of singing many of his songs for, for years. Sal's favorite song is also It Was a Very Good Year. And his close relationship with Irving Drake has given him some insights to its origins. But now the days grow short. It's a reflection of, of his life, and he wrote it autobiographically at the time. And uh, getting past the age that Sinatra was when he recorded it, uh, I, I find that every time I approach that song, it means more and more. 
And what does Irving Drake think about today's music? Is that music? 